game time for the untouchable true school sports. Let's go, baby. Bow. Be careful what you wish for because because it can become a reality. Yeah. The untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so this is my post fight review for Anaya Inouye versus TJ Doheny. And the result of the fight is Anaya Inouye seventh round stoppage. The knockout streak continues. He runs it up to nine stoppages in a row. He continues to put the finishing touches on what's been a pretty remarkable run at 122. Um, and yeah, man, I, I'll just say it like this. I, I I didn't have high expectations for this fight at all. I was hoping Doheny would come and be able to make it a fight. You know, he does got some big punching power. He just, he's a, he's got a very experienced former IBF champion. But I just, I didn't think Doheny would have um, the ring craft to be in the position to land the shots he needed, needed to, to to beat in a way, right? So with that being said, um, there's a, there, there, there's a lot of interesting things going on with this fight. Like, uh, I actually just was reading the, the fight night weights for both fighters. Inouye came in at 138 pounds or 62.7 kilos. He came in at 138 pounds, which is the heaviest the heaviest he's ever been in a boxing match in his, his entire career. Doheny rehydrated to 145 pounds. So he's damn near fighting a welterweight in there. So, I you know, I, I understand the the cautiousness he fought with because of him getting dropped this last fight and Doheny's punch of power. But even more so than that, I think also for Inoue, uh, him being so heavy, I think took away a bit from his speed. His speed looked uh, not quite as, as like, 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 like it normally is. And I think because of that, um, you know, there were some, there were some, I, I thought he lost two rounds. I didn't, I didn't think he like was losing the fight or anything, but I, I thought he lost two rounds. I thought Doheny, in spots of the fight was doing a good job fainting him, um, you know, punching him to the stomach and and, and and landing some good straight shots down the middle. It just wasn't consistent enough to where you could say he was winning the fight or was like overly competitive. But I thought I thought he won two rounds. One to two rounds, I think is fair. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it, look, it, it took a while for Inouye to get into his rhythm. Yeah, I, I really do feel like um, it was, I've seen people being harsh about the performance, and honestly, like, he, he wasn't really in any trouble. Doheny never had him hurt or anything like that. But I'll be honest, uh, and, and I'm watching all of his fights as a boxing fan and as someone who wants to see him fight certain guys at, at featherweight, I'm watching his fights through the lens of, like, how 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 is he going to look at featherweight? And I'll tell you like this, if, if he's going to rehydrate that high, if his body, because really and truthfully, there's all, there's, there's, all, there's all this talk about in a way, needing more time to grow into the weight at, at 122. I think he's already a, a solid full-fledged 122 pounder. That's why he's rehydrating so high. Um, so I think I think he could fight a featherweight his next fight if he truly wanted to, but they want to just make sure. And, um, you know, because those guys at featherweight are big and they're skilled and they can punch and they're, they're, there's some serious heat up there. So I, I get it. But if he's going to rehydrate around that high at 138, you know, 137, or if he ever rehydrates to 140 when he becomes a featherweight, I think... Believe it or not, I, I think it, it could spell trouble for him because one of the things that makes Inoue such a great fighter and such a dangerous fighter is his speed. And he, it's not like he was slow in this fight. It's just that his speed. I, I was watching him, and it's and there was a there was a, a an extra a, an extra layer of speed that he normally has that wasn't there in his fight. And he even uh, talked about it a little bit in the fight. Um, he stated the following, and I quote. This time, I'm going to increase it as much as I can intentionally. I tried to recover to the extent that my boxing skills did not drop, but I wanted to determine the appropriate weight of the day based on how to make that weight. I felt I was a little heavy. Um, and then he also said, yes, I think it's probably because of the weight, because I don't know, I don't know, while looking back at the video for a moment. So there you go. So in a, in a way, he's even saying himself, he felt heavy in there. He felt a little slow, and I think it showed in the fight. I thought... There were too many times where TJ Doheny was able to touch him a little too easily, and 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 I'll tell you this, and 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 this is just like these are objective thoughts. If Inouye wants to conquer divisions like 126 and even like a 130, how is he going to adapt to being a heavier fighter? Because speed is one of the things that makes him who he is. He's his legs, his speed. These are the things that allow him to close so much gap and close so much and cover so much distance and 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 range. And if he doesn't have that, can he can he fight in a different way to win? 
That's the question. And, and that's why I'm saying I've been saying it a lot when talking about uh, Inoue against Angelo Leo and these other guys at 126. Even if he is to beat some of these guys, I just think it's, it's going to have to look different because of the weight. You know, so... All in all, look, uh, at the end of the day, he fought a guy that was running through the whole country of Japan and was knocking out some good good young fighters in Doheny. Doheny was 4-0 in, in Japan. Um, and Doheny's a former champion. And at the end of the day, it, it still winds up being a, a, a knockout victory on his resume. So that, at the same time, while people are going to criticize, and, and there are some chinks in the armor, I feel that he's going to have when he goes up to featherweight, it's still a knockout victory on his resume against a former world champion and... If if that's if that's considered a bad day at the office for a fighter, then you know that that shows you the standard he set. So, a uh, good performance from him. Um, Bob Arum did say in the post fight interview that basically the plan for Inoue is to is to have him fight in December, presumably against Sam Goodman, who was supposed to fight in this fight, but he pulled out and you know whatever. That's why Doheny got the fight. So he wants him to fight Sam Goodman in December, and then uh, he said. We're going to have a big celebration in April, and we're taking him to the States. And he's going to come here to America, to, uh, to Las Vegas. And who knows? Who knows who will, who will fight? I, I've read reports where they're saying that they'll pair Inoue and Junta Nakatani on the same card. Um, or, quite possibly, it might that fight might be his featherweight debut. It might be against uh, Angelo Leo or Espinosa or something like that. So we, we, we don't know. Um, if, if, if he stays at 122 and fights like a merge on... Or somebody else at 122, then okay, then then you know he's going to be a 122 pounder probably for all of 2025, and maybe they do the the Junto fight there. But regardless, look, um, he ended the fight in such a fashion with Doheny that, and I've watched I've watched it a couple of times since then. Like he 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 literally punched Doheny in his ribs so hard he broke his back. And 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 some of the boxing fans on social media platforms they they jokingly said that in a way hit him so hard that he blew his back out you know so um look he's still he's still an elite fighter it was still a great performance it wasn't it wasn't like a top 10 performance it wasn't one that i think you'd ever put at the front of his highlight reels but it, it, it's a good it, it was a good performance for him um disappointed i'll be honest i'm, I'm a little disappointed with tj, TJ Doheny, and, and, and i know it's easy for me sitting on my chair talking on youtube to, to i'm not criticizing him but i'm just saying i thought i thought Doheny would show a little more resistance and um, put up a better fight than he did. But look, he, he did what he could. I thought he was doing some good things in there. At the end of the day, look, in a way is a great fighter. And to truly beat him, you got to be something special yourself. And, and Doheny's a good fighter, but he's not hes not a, a great fighter. He's not a special fighter. He's just a, a guy that's been champion, a guy that's a high-level veteran. He's 37 now, so um, it was what it was. So, um, yeah, that, that that's, that's my take on the fight. Um, not a, not not a bad fight, not a great fight, just a routine day at the office for for in a way. Um, but definitely, if you're if you're if you're being unbiased and if you're if you're looking at like the things that make in a way great, I, I honestly feel like there, there are some things I saw in this fight that would really cause some concerns for me if he was to go up the featherweight, just because, like I said, uh, he's in, he 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 said it himself. He, he intentionally put on weight this fight. He's going to be fighting at a heavier weight, which means that more than likely he will rehydrate even higher than what he rehydrated tonight or, or, or will be close to that. So will a decrease in speed at featherweight in the future affect in no way enough for him to potentially lose? We'll see. But um, yeah, that's, 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 that's my take on the fight. Let me know what you guys think. Did you guys think it was a spectacular performance? Did you, did you guys like what you saw from in the way against Ohani? Am I being hypercritical? Um, I don't think I am. I'm just being honest. Um, I think it was... A, a routine day at the office for him and a, and a good fight, but definitely some 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 things that uh, would cause some concern, you know. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, I'll, I'll go live about this later on. I'll have more to say about this later on because I I was supposed to give you guys a live today and I didn't do it because I don't know my body just shut down on me and whatever, you know. I I, I, I couldn't stay awake for it, but uh, we'll, we'll have a live. We'll discuss this a lot deeper um, on the live. But uh, yeah, give me your thoughts for now. I'll see you guys then. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take your eyes. Thank you for watching another video on the untouchable True School Sports Empire. I'm at the Boxing Hall of Fame out here in Canada, in New York. And for more great boxing content, just like this video, make sure you click and subscribe right over here.